Hi, I'm Old Nurse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Today I want to talk a little bit about numbers in Old Norse. Uh, a lot of people ask about this either because they're learning Old Norse and want to know more about how numbers work or uh, out of a general curiosity about language perhaps and how uh, this particular language handles numbers and counting and such. One thing that I'll say right off the bat is that uh, a, a lot of people confuse written language with spoken language. And so I get asked a lot if there are Old Norse uh, words for 1 or 13 or 9 or 55, whatever number somebody wants. And uh, even if I say, yes, there's a word for it and it's this, that, or the other word, what they often mean is, is there a rune that represents that number? Uh, but as far as we can tell, in actual runic inscriptions uh, from the Middle Ages and before, there are not separate symbols that mean numbers, nor a way to use the letter symbols to mean numbers. Uh, of course, uh, typically in modern English and most languages today, we use Arabic numerals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But you can also represent those as Roman numerals, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And neither way of indicating the numeral is actually a comment on the language used, right? No matter what language I speak, it can be English, it can be Japanese, it can be Akkadian, uh, if I write the number with that symbol, I mean that that number concept, and I'll say the word in my language, be that one in English, or itten in Icelandic, or, 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 or whatever. And uh, so, so the words were certainly there, certainly in Old Norse and before they could count to whatever number and had a way of expressing it. But that doesn't mean there is a symbol for it. In runes, typically numbers are just written out as words. So instead of having a particular symbol that stands for ain, meaning one, you simply write the word ain out in runes in Old Norse. All right, so let's talk about some unusual or interesting characteristics of numbers in Old Norse. One is that in early Old Norse, uh, getting into the 1200s, but probably not lasting through the 1200s, uh, so the century in which most of our written texts uh, were put to, or were put ink to vellum, they were written down, a uh, hundred, or Old Norse, hundrad, did not mean one zero zero, but one two zero. And the same thing with thousand, which meant not one zero zero zero, but one two zero zero. You can certainly see the resemblance to English hundred and thousand. And of course, uh, especially after the 1200s and now in the modern Scandinavian languages, these words or their descendants mean hundred and thousand, as in one zero zero and one zero zero zero. But uh, in Old Norse, typically, I assume, uh, unless the text seems particularly late, that that's what they mean. So, for example, in translating uh, Grimnismal, stanza 23, the first half, where it says in Old Norse, Fim hundred golva och um fjorum tygum, swa hig ek bilskirni med bugum. Thor's Hall Bilskirnir has 640 rooms, so I think, with its windings. But 640, which I'm translating, actually translates word for word 540, but I'm multiplying 5 times 120 rather than 5 times 100. What that means, too, is that in counting to 120, since 120 is 100, uh, 100, what we consider 100, is the equivalent of 10 t. What we consider 110 is the equivalent of 11 t. So tu tiger, elivu tiger. So Bilbo's uh, 111th birthday would actually be sort of uh, a normal way of expressing it in the more archaic Old Norse system. And also in early Old Norse, and here I'm talking again pre-1300 or so when you get a little bit more incorporation into the intellectual life of the rest of Europe, the tens past 20 aren't yet compound words like our 30, 40, 50, 60, etc. Or even modern Icelandic, Threotiu, Fjortiu, etc. Instead, there's a special word that means units of 10. And you see this in a lot of different forms. Uh, tiger, tiger, tiger. And what you do is you treat that as plural, decline it as a eustem masculine noun, and then you use the genitive of whatever is counted. So you can actually see an example of that in that stanza from Grimnismal. Fim hundred golva ok um fjorum tugum. So fjorum tugum, that's the dative plural of four of these units of 10, so that's 40. And then golva, floors, or rooms, 
is in the genitive plural because that's what's being counted. You don't use the, uh, it doesn't agree with the case of uh, the number being counted. Uh, in this case, 40, which is in the dative. So this is a characteristic of really early texts. We see also, um, for instance, in the Stockholm homily book, where a lot of this archaic language is usually found, you see, for instance, fasta di fiora te udaga, fasted 40 days. So that's four tens of days with daga, genitive plural. Also, you see things like trirti germana, three tens of men, i.e. 30 men. And uh, three hundred skippa, three hundreds of ships, i.e. 360 ships, or threor thusendir kvena, three thousands of women, i.e. 3,000 women. Uh, so hundred and thousand work the same way uh, in early Old Norse, where instead of just expressing the same um, case, and instead of agreeing like an adjective, they're basically nouns. This is a group of a hundred of these things, right? So hundreds, a hundred of mountains rather than a hundred mountains. We also get some real creativity as far as indicating numbers, uh, especially when you combine these units of 10 with uh, more basic numbers. So for example, 31, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Uh, let's just assume it's all gonna be in the nominative. Uh, so you could say, the closest thing to English would be something like threor, or excuse me, it's masculine, threer, tigir, Och ein, three tens and one. But you can also reverse the one in the 30s, so you could say ein, och, three tiger. That's pretty normal. But also perfectly acceptable and not that weird in Old Norse is to say something that poses a little bit more of a uh, second grade math problem. Elivu och tutsuku, 11 and 20 for 31, or tutsuku och elivu doing it the other way. Sometimes you also see something like einu mither en fjorir tiger one less than four tens, that means 39. Let's look now, before I continue with some of these other characteristics, let's actually talk a little bit about the, uh, the characteristics of numbers in Old Norse. Uh, uh, and the most basic characteristic is what are they? So if you know how to count in Old Norse, this will be a little bit boring, but I'll help you learn to count. First of all, numbers, if they come in multiple uh, forms based on gender, so they agree with the gender of the thing they're counting, uh, they will still be counted in masculine. So if you're simply counting out, counting seconds down or something like that, you count in the masculine. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I'll talk about uh, how to inflect words that inflect a little bit later. So one to ten. Ein, tver, trier, fjorir, fim, sex, siau, otta, niu, tiu. And then from 11 to 20, elivu, tolv, threton, fjorton, fimton, sexton, siaution, otion, nition, tutu. Then for 21 through 29, uh, it's pretty simple. You simply say tutuku, 20, and 1, and 2, and 3, or 1 and 20, 2 and 20, 3 and 20. The order doesn't matter. And as I discussed, uh, then the tens beyond that, 30, 40, 50, are made by combining uh, this word for a group of ten, tigir, with the uh, masculine form of the um, number that's being compounded with them. So, three tigir, fjord tigir, fim tigir, sex tigir, siau tigir, otta tigir, niu tigir, tiu tigir, tiu tigir, tenti, basically, meaning what we mean by a hundred. And then elivu tigir being 110, and hundrad being hundred. Okay, so then a uh, hundred is neuter. So if you want to say two hundreds, you use the neuter forms of the uh, numbers that actually inflect for uh, gender. So let's talk a little bit about the inflection before we get uh, further in this. The number one is basically inflected just like the definite article, the. So 
1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 Then 2 in masculine we have tver, tvo, tvegja, tveim or tveimer. Feminine tver, tver, tvegja and tveimer. And neuter tval, tval, tvegja, tveimer. Uh, so of course use the masculine to refer to a masculine ob uh, uh, noun, a uh, feminine to refer to feminine, neuter to refer to neuter or to mixed. And of course that's the origin of the a uh, little joke in Thrymskvita, when Loki says, we too, vitvau, he uses the neuter, he's saying that of him and Thor, one of them is, uh, is female. And then uh, three also inflects for case, gender, num well, not number, because the number is three. Uh, so masculine, you have thrir, thrio, thrigya, and then in the uh, uh, dative, thrimr, or thrim, or thremr, or threm. <coughs> Feminine is thryor, thryor, and then thrygya, and then thremer or thremer, and then neuter, thryu, thryu, thrygya, and thremer, thremer, thrym, threm, etc. And then in uh, the number four, masculine, fjorir, fjora, fjogora, fjorum. Feminine, fjorar, fjorar, fjogora, fjorum. Neuter, fjogor, fjogor, fjogora, fjorum. And then beyond that, uh, five and, uh, and above uh, aren't inflected. So, hundred, though, is a regular neuter noun. So, hundrad, hundrad, hundraths, hundradi, and then the plural with u umlaut, hundruth, hundruth, hundrata, hundruthum. Since it's neuter, if you have two hundreds, you do use the neuter form of one, two, three, four. So, eight, hundrad. Tval hundruth, thriu hundruth, fjogr hundruth. But thousand, thousand is feminine, although in modern Icelandic uh, it's typically treated as, as neuter. So, ah! should I leave that in? I don't know. I am standing on a uh, precipitous slope. Uh, so, thousand is, is a typical feminine. So, thousand, thousand, thousandar, thousand. And then in the plural, thusendir, thusendir, thusenda, thusendum. So if you're counting multiple thousands, two thousand, you need the feminine, right? Tvar thusendir, thrior thusendir, fjorar thusendir. Okay. It's interesting that uh, you have that difference in uh, two and three, where you have the R or not an R. You don't see... Uh, a Z there in Gothic. You see Thrym and Tfam, and we would expect there to be a Z in Gothic where there's an R in Old Norse there. But you do see uh, in some really old runic inscriptions, I'm talking old Elder Fudlark inscriptions, you do sometimes see a Z after the date of plural M in some very archaic Proto-Norse, and so that may actually be a survival from that Z that used to be part of a uh, date of plural ending in earlier Old Norse which we'd infer would be there anyway. Uh, but for instance, we see, you know, guest tombs. Uh, that's on the uh, Steintoft inscription, DR357. That's uh, southern Sweden, uh, somewhere in the early 600s. Uh, we do see that Z, and that may be the origin of the R in uh, Thremer, Thremer, uh, Tfemer. All right. So here's another interesting thing about how you count in Old Norse. If one is in the number, so if it's 1 or if it's 21, 11 doesn't count because it's its own word, but if it's 1, 21, 3 tens and 1, 100 and 1, 100, 3 tens and 1, whatever. As long as 1 is in there, the word 1, the referent is singular. This is not all that unusual among Indo-European languages, but it can throw off English speakers, right? I don't say 21 ship or 20 and 1 ship. I say 21 ships. But in Old Norse, you still use the... Uh, the singular. So while we talk about in mother one man and tver men two men, we talk about tutugu ok en mother twenty and one man singular, uh, because en is in there, and so it's going to govern a singular uh, referent. Similarly, tval hundred ok en mother two hundreds, really two hundred forty and one men, but mother man is in the singular. So interesting stuff there. Now, another thing to mention 
is that the ordinals should be pretty familiar to a speaker of another Germanic language today or yesterday. So uh, I'll give you uh, first through tenth. Those are fursti, annar, which also means other, thrithi, fjordi, fimpti, seti, siaundi, niundi, tiundi. Uh, and then for, for instance, twenty ith, that's tutukundi, for thirty ith, thritukundi, fortieth, fertukundi, and then uh, the ones from fifty up are a little more uh, predictable. Fimtukundi, sextukundi, sialtukundi, otatukundi, nitukundi, titukundi, elivutukundi, right, eleventieth. And then uh, interestingly, words for hundredth and above in the ordinals are not attested in Old Norse. Now, as I mentioned, anar is a uh, adjective that can mean both second and also other, so we frequently see it in that meaning. It is related to English other. It's from the same root. This word inflects a little bit differently than people typically expect. Uh, that has to do with what happens to an n followed by a thorn in the history of Old Norse. For those who are uh, curious, I'll put the inflection up there for you, but just to point this out, uh, uh, to make it a little clearer, it basically has normal adjective endings, but if you think of the root as sort of two different things, if it is followed by another consonant, anar with two r's, anarar, anari, then the root form is anar. If it's followed by another vowel, then the root form is adr. That's why you get adrir, adrar, odrum with you umlaut. That may help make that look a little bit clear and more understandable. And then also, I guess you could call a number uh, the word for both. Uh, that inflects in all, uh, I was about to say numbers because I'm used to saying gender case and number, but of course the number is two for both. Uh, so in the masculine, bodir, boda, uh, for nominative and accusative, feminine, bodar, bodar, neuter, badi, badi, and then genitive and dative for all those uh, genders are bodum, dative plural, and begya, genitive plural. So as I mentioned, Numbers in Old Norse are kind of interesting because it is a different way of, of categorizing numbers on us. It's a little bit like the different way that Old Norse categorizes color from based on what we might expect in a modern uh, Germanic language like English. But uh, the vocabulary of numbers is still pretty familiar, right? I mean, most of these words do look recognizably similar to their English cognates. Ein, one, tveir, two, three, three, hundra, thousand, hundred thousand. Not too terribly different, and the same with the ordinals. Firsti, which I believe actually English first is borrowed from that. I think in Old English it's forma. So, I hope if you're studying Old Norse, this has been useful and or interesting for you. I hope that if you enjoy these presentations made for free in beautiful places, you'll consider looking at my Patreon. And for now, from beautiful Colorado, I am wishing you all the best. <laughs>